Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome to my channel. All right, everybody, you've been asking for it. This is my top 25 DIYs of 2021. All of these projects have a little bit of everything, literally. There are some Dollar Tree DIYs. There are some thrift flips. There are some Michaels flips. There's even some Ikea flips. And all of these projects were literally some of my favorites that I still have in my home today. If you are one of my long-term subscribers, my OG, Thank you so much for being here. That just means you're part of the original gang from when I started the channel back in 2019, I think. Thank you guys so much, honestly, from the bottom of my heart. If you're brand new to the channel or you're, you know, you joined sometime in the last year or so, thank you as well and welcome. Everybody's an OG from this point on. And uh, I am so looking forward to bringing you some amazing DIYs in 2022. And for project number one, I'm going to be taking two of these Dollar Tree drawers that I picked up in two different sizes. I also have some wood beads that I picked up from Michaels, and I also have some large wooden dowel rods. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the front of these uh, boxes here. I don't need the hardware on this, and we're just going to put that aside and save that for another project. And then through the magic of painting and staining, <laughs> I'm going to be using this dark ash colored stain that I really, really like. It is actually in a tube. And what I like about it is it's super easy to use, first of all, and I use it a lot like I do regular stain. Put it on with the brush, wipe off any excess, and then use my heat gun to go ahead and just dry it. Um, I also take, I'm taking um, these wooden dowel rods of these wooden sticks that I picked up from, I believe these came from Dollar General. These might be the ones actually from Dollar Tree also. I'm gonna go ahead and paint these this steel color with this Rust-Oleum steel paint that I really love so much. It's a metallic paint and it works on all kinds of great surfaces. For your two sticks, you're gonna go ahead and just kind of put some glue in the corners there like you see me doing. And then I am going to kind of bring the points to a um, an end. And then I'm gonna repeat that process again with two other dowel rods, bringing those four dowel rods to the top kind of like a uh, kind of like a teepee we'll say now when you have those all glued together when you have them all pointed up then you're going to add some glue and just kind of make sure that everything is glued together and then I'm going to add one of my beads to the top that I also painted I did also fill in the hole at the top with a little bit of wood filler and then just spray paint it over top of that I'm also going to make kind of a baby version of this kind of repeating the same process for this one, I use the smaller, and boom, you've got two great looking candle holders or plant holders. I really, really loved the way that these turned out. And for DIY number two, we are going to take one of these Dollar Tree shelves. Also, I had this piece of hardware that I picked up, this pulley from my local Ace Hardware store. You can find these at Home Depot and Lowe's and places like that. This shelf actually came from my friend Nora, who lives in Orlando. So thank you so much, Nora, for this. I had been looking for these for quite some time, and I actually had a couple different subscribers send them to me. So I'm super, super appreciative. Now, I'm taking my stain here. Once again, this is a different one in a tube that I really like working with and I'm treating it almost like it's antiquing wax. Just taking my brush there and spreading it around. I'm going to do it on both sides and then I will wipe off any of that excess. And then you can also use your heat gun to help speed up this drying time if you need to. Totally up to you. I can be a little uh, a little impatient sometimes, we'll say, when it comes to letting these things dry. Not only did I get both sides of this, but I'm also going to make sure and get all the edges of this because I want this to be all one consistent color. This uh, wood is kind of like a um, kind of like a plywood or a uh, MDF wood, but it actually takes the stain really well. Now for the um, strings that I pulled off of there, the twine, I am going to go ahead and just untie that and get rid of that loop that was at the top, but we are actually still going to reuse this rope and I'm going to feed it through the pulley. And uh, when I do that, I'm gonna make sure that I have kind of each rope 
in the corresponding hole. So, um, you know, that way my ropes are crisscrossing basically. So I'm going to go ahead and feed the twine right back through there. Once I do that, I'm going to tie each rope off in a knot and we are going to have a really cool, very cool looking industrial shelf. Now, with those ropes, you do want to make sure and be careful that you don't get those crisscrossed because if you do, then your shelf just isn't going to hang right. Your, your uh, ropes and everything are going to get twisted and then the things that you put on it are going to fall off and you definitely don't want that to happen. Now, when this is all said and done, I was able to stage mine with a plant and I actually found this really cool oil can that I picked up at a yard sale. I think it was like $3 and I loved it so much. I thought it was super, super cool and I really loved the way that this turned out. And for project number three, we are going to go into the toy section. And I grabbed two of these um, kind of uh, ball launcher things. And then I have some of these oversized jingle blocks. And I'm going to use a set of these wood planks. I'm actually going to only be using two of those wood planks. So these jingle blocks were given to me from a neighbor. And I've used just about all of them in all of my DIY projects. And they used to play games and they had foster children and they would write different sayings and things on them to remind their kids like how special they were. And they were, they were involved in the community and they would do a lot of things with foster kids and foster adoption. So that's kind of why you see some writing on the blocks and different things. And you may even notice things like adoption and different words like that. But I thought that they were really, really cool. I'm going to take two of those blocks and glue them together like you saw there. And then for the actual um, ball launcher thingamabob, I'm going to go ahead and launch that ball and get rid of that. Uh, came right back to me. Otis enjoyed playing with those ping pong balls. He loves a ping pong ball and he was in heaven when he had these two ping pong balls to play around with. So for the... Um, kind of torch looking thing, if you will, I have removed the, um, the, uh, what is it? The trigger to launch that ball. And then you can see that I have these two, um, Jenga pieces here and I am going to glue these onto the back. Now, if you were going to use this and make this permanent, I would probably use like an E6000 or something like that. But for this purpose, the hot glue actually worked out really well. And these are still holding up to this day, which is really, really cool. Now we're going to take our two Jingle Block pieces and we're going to glue it onto our board. And we're going to make sure that that board does not interfere with the green part of that ball launcher there because we're making some sconces with these. And uh, we want everything to be able to hang nice and flat up against the wall. So once again, adding a nice a bit of my all-purpose glue. This is a hot glue from Shorebinder. I'm gonna go ahead and glue those together and I'm just gonna repeat this process for the second one. I took everything outside and I gave it a nice coat of spray paint in this great bronzy copper color. I really wanted something that was going to stand out in my living room and something that would really pop against a lot of the navy accents that I have. And I freaking love the way that these look. But I did something a little different with the inside of these. Now, you could use a plain white tea light if you absolutely wanted to. I chose to use tea lights that change colors. I picked these up at Dollar Tree. I think they may have even been like a leftover Christmas item. I love the colors that come out from these. Again, you could certainly use a white tea light if you wanted to, but for a party, especially a New Year's Eve party or something, I think that these are really, really a lot of fun. And everybody that has seen these so far in my living room has absolutely no idea that these are Dollar Tree beach toys. I was so, so happy with this. Now for project number four, we're going to take this black Dollar Tree mirror. It was already black when I got it, and I wanted to kind of make like an antique mirror, like something that maybe my maybe my grandmother would have had when she was, you know, young and something that could almost feel like a family heirloom. So I'm going to go ahead and take some painter's tape, and I'm just going to protect that mirror and cover that up, and uh, we're just kind of... Uh, 
piece it together kind of as you can see here and I just kind of pull little pieces off and kind of work on covering the center and then once I've got this kind of um, close to being covered now I can take my fingernail and just kind of trace along that mirror. Now for my mirror I am using my Waverly ink chalk paint and I'm doing that because I want some texture and chalk paint gives a nice texture and it's going to also help dull down some of that plastic black material that the mirror is actually made of. So go ahead and take your um, Waverly ink chalk paint and just kind of keep dabbing and you'll do this on both sides and you can be as messy as you want, especially if you have a silicone mat like I do down below there. That green one is from Shorebonder and it is fantastic. I'm going to take my heat gun, speed up that process for drying. Now I'm going to take my folk art metallic paint here and I am going to use the same brush that I used to put the black chalk paint on. And even if I dribbled a little on my silicone mat, it's not gonna matter because it's actually really, really easy to clean up. And you can see too that the black chalk paint is you know, kind of mixing together because there's still a little bit on the brush, there's still a little bit on the mirror that's not 100% dry yet. And I love the texture. And I just kind of went back and forth kind of literally building up layers and layers of this until I got it to the patina that I wanted. I absolutely love the way this looks in my bathroom. It's such a great accent piece and I really, really love how expensive this one looks. All right, and for project number five, we are going to be making a modern looking clock. I'm taking a square wreath form from Dollar Tree, some large dowel rods from Dollar Tree, and also some popsicle sticks. The first thing I'm gonna also do is use one of these round plates, but I'm just gonna use one of these. It doesn't matter if they are clear or if they have little specks of gold like those did, any of them are perfectly fine. Now, for my dowel rods, I'm gonna go ahead and just crisscross them. I'm going to be gluing this one down, but I am gonna take my dowel rod and I'm gonna trim it down a little bit because I don't want the dowel rod to be showing. And uh, for the longer one, because you're gonna want some support, you can go ahead and glue this down and uh, kind of eyeball this. Depending on the length of your dowel rod, you may want to play around with this um, a little bit. And then for my other dowel rod, once this is glued in place and nice and solid, I am then going to take my other dowel rod and I'm just going to kind of find the center point and I am going to clip that down. And um, you will notice that I end up cutting the dowel rods down even more once they have been securely glued to the frame of this uh, you could definitely just measure them and trim them down. That was kind of a decision that I made after the fact when I was doing this project. But again, feel free um, to leave them longer as well because if you strategically place your numbers on the clock, you're not even going to really see that at all. So now that I've got my crisscross kind of built here, um, I am going to take one of these plastic plates. By the way, I'm sitting in a kind of a squeaky chair, so if you start hearing, you know, that that's the chair in the background. That's not my back or anything. <laughs> so I did take my plate here, and I'm just gonna glue this down on top of the dowel rods and make sure that that is nice and solid. Again, I'm using just hot glue for the purpose of the DIY. If you wanted to make this a little bit stronger, I would definitely encourage that you use like an E6000 quick hold or even super glue. Now you can kind of see that I'm taking that center point there and I'm kind of getting rid of that longer piece. And then um, I'm gonna take my clock base that I picked up from Amazon and this just has a regular hole in the back of it just like you would hang it on a wall directly. I took my popsicle sticks, I cut them down to be kind of Roman numerals, and now I'm taking them and I'm staggering them across the, um, in the in the placements of where the numbers would be on the clock. The reason why I removed that center bar from the wreath form kind of on those four sides where my Roman numerals are gonna go is because the wreath form is not flat. And with that center bar, I was not getting a flat surface to be able to glue my numbers down to. So once I have everything glued, 
down, I am ready to go. I loved the way that this turned out. I did spray paint their wreath form black. I don't know if I told you that, but number six, um, we are going to take one of these ice buckets from Dollar Tree and this big bundle of twine that I picked up on Amazon. You can find twine at the Dollar Tree though. We're gonna remove this sticker and just pray to God that this Dollar Tree sticker comes off of here in one swoop. And the first one did, and let's see if I'm just as lucky with the second one. Yes, sometimes those stickers are pretty aggressive. Now I'm gonna take my bucket outside and I'm spray painting it with Rust-Oleum's matte black paint. I love to use spray paint. You could certainly use chalk paint and it would give you almost the same exact effect. Um, what I like about the spray paint too is so it's just easy. The day that I did this was a beautiful, bright, sunny day out. It was nice and warm out, so it was actually really, really easy for me to do. And I just made sure that since I was gonna be doing both sides of this, that uh, I didn't spray paint that handle area until I was able to, uh, or till I was ready rather to kind of flip it around. And uh, I did end up giving this two coats. I coated it on the inside and the outside. So. Once I've got everything done, now I'm going to take my twine. This twine is thicker than normal Dollar Tree twine. I personally love this twine. I buy it on Amazon all the time. It's actually featured in my Amazon store and linked below. I went ahead and just wrapped both of the handles with the twine and then used my lighter to kind of burn off any of those frayed edges. And I love the way this looks in my kitchen. I'm able to keep my K-cups in it. It's very, very, very easy for me to grab my coffee in the morning and sort through everything. And I'm so happy with the way that this DIY turned out. And for project number seven, I'm gonna be using some of these Dollar Tree racetracks. You get two in one package from Dollar Tree. Also, I had these crafter square wood pieces in this kind of rectangle shape that I really liked a lot. And I did also have two of these and it's kind of got this really nice routed edge, which I think makes for a very nice DIY project. You could play around with it. You could find ones without knots, either way. And then I also had two of these cardboard lids. These are from the round kind of cardboard boxes that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. I'd use the basis for something else. I had these Jenga block pieces. I don't think I ended up using them for this project, but I thought initially I might have to. So you're gonna find out when we kind of work towards the end of this project that I end up not using the Jenga pieces. So don't worry about the Jenga pieces. Now, the great thing about this track is that it is flexible and it has a natural bend. If you bend it one way, you will see a crease in the track and that is not the way that you want to bend it. And if you bend it the opposite way, you will not see a crease. So I just said that backwards, but you see the crease here that I'm talking about and that is not what you want. So now that I've got my track uh, bending in the right place, I am going to join my two ends of track to my piece of wood. Now you see the larger circle at the end of the track, well, that one is not where you want to put your screw. Um, I am going to be overlapping those two smaller holes that you see there, and we are going to be using those as our point place to hold our screws together. So I've gone ahead and I've already marked it on my uh, board here that you can see, and I've got my screws here ready to go. I'm going to take my Ryobi cordless drill that I really like working with, and uh, I am just going to place one of the screws onto that blue dot that I made with my Sharpie pen that I picked up from Dollar Tree, of course. And uh, I am going to just drill that down in the center. We're just gonna hold it and I'm just gonna use some light pressure until that piece is screwed down to the bottom and the base of my wood. So once that is done, then I'm going to repeat the process with the other side of the track, and we are going to bring those two sides together, kind of like so. You could try and overlap the holes if you wanted to, but I didn't like the bulk that it was giving it, so that's why I am using two screws rather than one screw to hold kind of both sides of the track done. You would think like in theory that you could really do that, but it, it does actually create a little bit of bulk that I just didn't like. So 
Um, that's why I'm using two screws. And then once again, just kind of holding that in place, then you've got something that looks like this. Now for the round cardboard lid, that is where I had originally had thought that I was going to put some Jenga block pieces, but I didn't have to because the way that this was going to fit on top of that, it's going to actually work really, really well. So I just found the center point. I put a screw through there and then I'm just going to drill this down and screw this into my wood base as well. Kind of creating a candle holder of some sort, kind of a modern looking candle holder that you might see it like a pottery barn or something. If you wanted to elevate that centerpiece again, you could have stacked like maybe four pieces of Jenga block and kind of built that up and then glued this all together. But I really wanted to just kind of screw this all together so I knew that I would have a really good Hold. Now I took these outside. I spray painted them with my matte black spray paint. I did do two coats just to make sure that that orange Hot Wheels track was completely covered because it was poking through, even though that Rust-Oleum paint is really, really good. I uh, just wanted to make sure that these had a nice, nice covering. All right, and for project number eight, we are going to be doing a project from Crafter Square Dollar Tree items. We're taking two of these Crafter Square wood planks that you can pick up in the Crafter Square section, and uh, you're going to make sure that you've got the two smoother sides together. Now, you want to kind of figure out, you know, as close together as possible some of these crafter square items aren't exactly you know uniformed for mine i was able to uh, figure out which sides were going to fit together best and uh, i'm going to add some shore blonde shore bonder wood glue onto the end of this and we are just going to glue those two boards together kind of like so and uh, once i do have a really good hold on that we are going to go ahead and just pull away any of that glue that might have seeped down through there and then I do flip this over and I just add some oversized popsicle sticks across the seam there just to make sure that everything is holding down and everything is nice and firm. So once now we've got everything solid and everything together, it is time to go ahead and add those popsicle sticks. I had a little bit of... Um, like it was a little loose feeling. So I wanted to make sure that that glue was going to hold really strongly. And as you can see there, I just picked it up and put it down. So it's holding nicely. Now I'm taking those oversized popsicle sticks and I am just going to add a gob of my glue right on top of that. And we're going to glue both of these sticks down and make sure that that also has a really good hold before we move on to the next step, which is incorporating some of the Dollar Tree wallpaper. Now for this one, I am taking the Dollar Tree wallpaper and I am going to be covering the front of this. Now, you may remember in 2021, I was able to meet a subscriber named John Paul and his mom sent me a kind of like a care package as a thank you. And she included some of this Dollar Tree wood grain wallpaper that I really, really liked. So I'm simply just going to join those two pieces together and I'm going to be gluing those directly down on top of my wood planks, making sure that the kind of uh, the edges of the wallpaper kind of line up with each other. And here where it doesn't line up, it's not such a big deal because you will see that I'm going to be covering that up. Now I did want to go ahead and make sure that my edges weren't this raw wood. I wanted this to feel like it was, you know, a little more kind of uh, ingrained, if you will, into the wood and a part of the wood wallpaper that you see. So I am just taking my ink chalk paint and I'm just painting right along the edges of all of this wood. And uh, I'm going to then take my heat gun out and make sure that that is good and dry. And then I'm going to take kind of a little bit of my paint on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of dry brush a little bit over the wallpaper and kind of wipe it away. And I'm doing that because it's kind of dulling down the wallpaper just a little bit, maybe giving it more a little bit of a wood look versus being like a shiny wallpaper. And then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree garden hook. And I also have this Dollar Tree um, 
lid for a mason jar and it's a lid hanger. We're gonna take those and join those together. First, I'm gonna take the bracket. I'm going to screw the bracket onto my wood board and then I'm going to cut my chain down appropriately. And I've got a very cool industrial looking plant hanger that I really, really love. And then for project number nine, I am going into the toy section. I found this horseshoe ring toss game and this Dollar Tree wood block from the Crafter Square section. And yes, the label re removed itself very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole in the center of my wood block. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. And I'm going to make sure that it is large enough to hold a wooden dowel rod or one of those kind of uh, plastic stems that you see there. Because it has a point in it, it's actually going to fit perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and add some hot glue into that hole. And then I'm just going to take my plastic rod and just glue that right down, kind of like you see me here doing and then after that is good and stable and sturdy I am going to take my ring and I'm going to glue one of them on the top of my um plastic rod and then I'm going to try and be fancy here and glue the other one on top kind of like so and I did hold this into place until it was good and solid and um, took it outside to spray paint it now once I took it outside to spray paint it I want wanted this to look really really cool and um what I realized is because this plastic will come off of here, it's best to go ahead and just separate this because um, I did not want that hot glue to kind of melt itself. And then I decided at the last minute that I wanted to go ahead and stain the base kind of a dark wood and it created a really cool kind of knick-knacky thing. I really liked the way that this turned out. And you may have noticed that the one ring is a little bit lower because the hot glue did indeed melt. And for project number 10, we are going to take a glass plate and a glass, um, what's that smaller plate called? Small plate. <laughs> and we're also going to take a glass candle holder from Dollar Tree. I glued everything together with E6000 quick hold, and then I took it outside and I'm spray painting it with this blue sea glass spray paint. I love this sea glass spray paint and of course because it's in blue you know it's my favorite color now I went ahead and I did go probably a little heavier on this you know I like my blue colors but I did do it in stages I did one kind of lighter coat and then I let it dry and then I went back in and kind of kept spray painting it until it gave this gorgeous blue color that I loved so much. It was such a focal point on my coffee table and I absolutely loved the way it looked just as is. I needed to go ahead and stage it with something and these were some DIYs and some projects that I had on hand. So I just kind of staged it real quickly for this video, but again, super, super happy with the way this one turned out. And then for project number 11, we are going to take one of these Dollar Tree trays, some rope. Also have this Dollar Tree plus wood round. And I thought that I could create this really cool looking coffee tray for my coffee bar. Now, the first thing I want to do with that wood round is use my antiquing wax from Waverly. I love this and I literally just glob it right down on top of the surface because I've got my cra catch crafting mat, try saying that multiple times, my catch crafting mat down below that's going to absorb any of that stain that has spilled. I took my heat gun out and I'm just going to let that dry. And then we are going to pop that aside. The great thing about this catch crafting mat is that once it is done, I can literally peel it off from my beautiful white surface there. And you'll notice that not one single bit of that antiquing wax got in on my clean white work surface. So how about that for a really cool product? Now, go ahead and take your Dollar Tree kind of... Um, lattice or lace looking tray here and put, paint it. Um, I'm using my spray paint from Rust-Oleum. This is the matte black that I love to use all the time. And I am going to paint both sides of my tray 
I'm gonna also make sure that I have a good coating on the kind of lattice part of that. I'm not so concerned on whether or not I get it completely covered in the center of the tray because that's where a wood round is going to come in. Now I did take my, you know, my cutting machine and um, I did find a decal that I loved that was kind of oversized and it said something about coffee and it had these really great coffee beans on it and it said coffee please. For me, I thought that this was great. Now, if you don't have a cutting machine and you are a talented artist, you could certainly paint this. You could also use stickers. Dollar Tree has so many really cool sticker options that you can get from the Crafter Square section. I went ahead and just transferred this over. This is permanent vinyl, by the way onto my wood surface and it did take a little bit of extra work with the um, with the uh, palette and everything making sure that that was down. Now for my rope because I need my rope to kind of fill in some of the edges there where that wood round is not. I just took a piece of my nautical rope and cut it to be the exact same size as my inner circle. That way you can see here how the coffee please part is going to lay in there that way I don't have a kind of random space you know for crumbs or whatever might end up on this tray and then once I had my rope and everything set up I just added more hot glue and then literally just kind of squished it down in between that wood round making sure that everything was fitting and you don't even see it which is kind of amazing because it is a perfect exact fit. Now, once I did finally get those ends together, I was super, super happy with this. I thought that this was the cutest tray in the world. I wanted this on my coffee table initially, but that would look kind of weird. So then I used it for my coffee in the morning. I would literally just put my coffee cup on it and maybe whatever I'm gonna have for breakfast or my little spoon rest, just so I had a place to kind of drink my coffee and enjoy it in the morning. What I also really loved about this was that I thought it looked super great on my coffee bar as well. I love the way that this looks. You could stage it with anything that you may use for your coffee. Also with my particular tray, it was large enough to also hold my canisters, which I loved. And for project number 12, we are going to take two of these house-shaped frames that I picked up from Dollar Tree and also one of these fencing pieces that you can get from Dollar Tree sometimes in the summertime. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the innards from our frame, including those little metal clips. You're not going to need any of that. You could certainly put it aside and use it for another project. For my fencing, I did lay my frame over top of that and just kind of traced with a black Sharpie where I needed to kind of trim this. What's great about this plastic fencing is that you can literally cut it with a regular pair of scissors. It actually cuts really, really easily. And all I'm going to do is trim it down to the areas that I kind of trimmed away or that I lined with my Sharpie. I haven't tr quite trimmed it away just yet. And now you can see kind of what we are going for. So just keep kind of trimming that away until it fits inside of your house frame. So once I did that, I decided that I wanted to kind of darken up my house frames just a little bit. And um, I added some antiquing wax to them. And uh, these kind of have like a uh, glossy finish to them. So they're not going to really hold a lot of this stain. And I was actually okay with that in this case because I didn't want them to be black. I just kind of wanted them to be a little duller. Now, I probably should have taken some sandpaper or something to these, but uh, I didn't. They don't look that different, but to me, they, they worked. So <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and add some hot glue, and I am just going to glue those plastic fence pieces in the inside of my frames. And I've created some really cool artwork that I can hang up in my dining room that you may see at like Kirkland's or somewhere like that. 
And for project number 13, we're going to take two of these magnifying glasses from Dollar Tree. You can find these in the toy section. Also, I'm using one package of this wood shop kit. For my magnifying glasses, I am going to go ahead and cut that rounded edge off. And I'm going to be doing it right about at that area above that screw. That screw kind of helps hold everything together. And we're actually wanting to have a very nice flat surface. And that screw just kind of gave me a line, if you will, that I can work to on both of those pieces. I'm using actually a plumber saw and it's just kind of like a hacksaw. And it, as you can see, made a pretty nice cut. Now I am just gonna go ahead and sand it down and just make sure that it is nice and smooth and make sure that everything is nice and even on both of those. That way we can go ahead and glue those down. But before we even get that far, we are going to tape off our magnifying glass. Now, I couldn't find my painter's tape, so I'm just using some Dollar Tree duct tape here, and it works just as good for, you know, kind of masking off this glass, if you will. And then I'm gonna use my little X-Acto knife there and just kind of trim around that and make sure that everything is nice and clean so we can spray paint these at some point. Now, what I loved about this wood shop kit, and I actually did grab two of these, is this particular kit is kind of this birdhouse, and it's got these really long pieces in here. And uh, I wanted to be able to use them for this project, and you are going to need two of those. So for this project, once I've got those wood pieces all set aside, we're also going to use uh, two of these Dollar Tree wood planks as well. You can find these in the crafter square section, pretty easy to find at most Dollar Tree stores. And then we are going to go ahead and get these prepped and we're going to start gluing them together, but we're also going to add some of these jingle block pieces because we are kind of building sconces here. And also I'm going to be adding in two of these round Dollar Tree mirrors. So for our wood pieces let's go ahead and assemble one of our sconces and to do that i'm going to be taking my wood pieces we are just going to make sure our surface is very clean there and then for this piece of wood that has this flat end we are going to end up gluing this piece down and then we're going to add our jingle blocks also on the bottom now I'm using a combination of wood glue and I'm also going to be using some of my hot glue and we are going to be gluing these together. Anytime I'm using a wood glue, I use that oversized bottle of Gorilla Glue and I just use my paintbrush just to add whatever I need to my wood pieces. So once I've got everything kind of um, set up and ready to go, I am just going to hold this into place and make sure that this is good and sturdy until it is ready for the next step. Now, I'm going to hold this into place for a little while, and then I'm going to repeat this process, and I am going to have two pieces that look identical to each other, kind of like this here. Now, once I get to this point and everything is nice and glued and hardened, I am going to go through and just add some hot glue around the edges there just to make sure that this is good and sturdy and also because it will help act as a filler to some degree. Now, I'm going to take some hot glue. I'm going to put it on the end of my magnifying glasses and then you can see that one in the back there. I'm going to put these face down and that is so. I've got really good support on these and they are gluing and holding together. I did also go in with some E6000 just to make sure that this was good and solid and very, very stable before moving on to the next part, which was taking these outside and spray painting them. Now, once everything dried and set up, I did take them outside and I started to spray paint them. I wanted to go with kind of this metal black. This is actually a metallic black color that you can pick up from Rust-Oleum. And I wanted to these to really have that iron look to them. These are going to be those magnifying glass sconces. And again, I'm just going through and spray painting both sides of this. And then I will flip these over and make sure that I have the other side of these all painted. The uh, blue paint from the 
or the blue plastic, I should say, from the magnifying glass actually held up really well to the spray paint. And when they were all done, I was really, really happy. Now, I did end up adding in a smaller jingle block that you may see there on the magnifying glass, and you'll see why in just a second. For our round mirrors, I'm just going to glue those down in the center, just kind of eyeballing those and using the top of the sconce kind of as my um, guide, if you will. And uh, once that is held in place and it is nice and solid, I'm going to move over to the next one. Get that done as well. And once those are all set up, then I'm going to add a strip on the back and hang these on that piece of the um, jingle block that I added just behind the magnifying glass there, it is because I am putting a tea light candle there. And I did glue the tea light just directly down on top of that. And as you can see, this gives a really cool, almost vintage vibe of a magnifying glass sconce that you might find in like an antique store or something. I'm super, super happy with these. I love the way that these turned out. I love sconces. I often change out my sconces and everything in the living room multiple, multiple times and um, pretty obsessed with these. These are actually in my guest bedroom right now. And for DIY number 14, we are going to take one of these Dollar Tree bingo games. I have seen these at my Dollar Tree store so many different times and often always think, what can I do with them? What can I do with it? And uh, I finally figured out something. Now, go ahead and take your bingo parts um, out of the box. And the only thing that we're going to be really using is this black base as well as this handle. You can put the balls and the pieces aside. We're actually not going to end up using those. I'm going to go ahead and just use a pair of pliers here and just break off the plastic on the bottom of the um, bingo game there. And then I'm going to add a Jenga wood block to help support the base of another wood piece I'm going to be adding to this after I spray paint everything this black color. Once again, using my favorite color, Rust-Oleum Black Matte Spray Paint. Given this two coats, I then took it inside after it dried and I started working on my wooden box. Now, for the wooden box, this is that wooden drawer or crate system that you can get from Dollar Tree's Crafter Square. I just took the drawer out and I'm going to put that aside. I'm using my Waverly Antiquing Wax on this and I am just going to wipe this down on all sides and also get some of the inside and the bottom of this. You'll want to make sure that this is just completely covered because you are going to be putting a plant in this and you don't want the sides of that planter to show. I did not go all the way down to the bottom of my interior of my box. I did only go about halfway down, so it's really just low enough to be able to hide the rocks and everything that we're going to be adding to this planter. So once you've got everything all set up and stained and ready to go, it is time to go ahead and assemble this, or at least you're going to make it look like it is assembled and on that crank. Now, I took a piece of my dowel rod and I just kind of clipped it off and I painted it using my Arteza uh, paint marker here. And uh, I am just doing this because I am going to insert this kind of in one side of where the handle would typically go for that box. Now you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and just take my box. I'm going to put that down on top and then I'm going to take the handle on the one side and just glue it on the inside here. But Again, I want to give this the illusion that this wooden box is kind of sitting on this base, if you will. So I'm going to then take my little piece of dowel rod and just feed that in there like so. And that gives it the look as if that crank or that handle is going all the way across the interior of that box. Then all you have to do is fill it with some rocks. These are rocks that I picked up from Dollar Tree and I added some succulents and you've got the cutest planter ever. On to number 15, we are going to do another very easy tiered tray using these plastic serving pieces, these plastic plates and uh, 
small plate that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead and glue two of the plates together and two of the smaller plates together. Are they called salad plates? I don't. I just call them small plate and big plate. But uh, I'm gluing two of the small plates together and two of the large plates together. And then I'm going to take a Dollar Tree glass candlestick and we are going to create a tear tray with it. Now, I love these plastic plates with this silver lining. I think that they are really, really beautiful. And you could totally just keep them like this if you wanted to. And just together, they would make a really beautiful tear tray. So if you're doing a, you know, a, a, a party and you've got some cupcakes or something that you want to be able to put on a tear tray, this is a great way to do it. And now again, I'm just using hot glue just because it's pretty easy to use whenever I'm kind of making these DIY projects. If you wanted something that was sturdier and you wanted something with a better hold, I would definitely use an E6000. Now, even though this could be gorgeous as is, I'm actually taking it outside and I'm using my terracotta spray paint from Rust-Oleum. And I'm going over this entire thing with two coats of my Rust-Oleum spray paint and it creates the coolest tear tray that looks like it's made out of terracotta. You can stage this however you want. It's such a cool summer kind of vibe with some succulents. There's all kinds of great things you can do with this. Now, moving on to number 16, this is one of my larger DIYs. I needed an end table and I had a great vintage suitcase that I had had, I've had it for quite a while. And I also found this really cool table base at Goodwill. And I took that table base and some of these pipe fitting uh, bracket things and uh, that's the technical term for them, by the way. And I just went ahead and cleaned up my trunk. Now, this trunk is really, really old, and it has been around the block. And that's kind of what I really love about it, to be honest. I wanted to give this trunk a new life. I had been using this in my fireplace, and I've used it for a couple different things. And I really wanted to make a table out of it. Now, this base fit perfectly. I could not have asked for a better setup. So the first thing I did was just kind of figure out the height that I wanted to have my table at. And then I just simply marked it with my pencil. That way I knew where to go and drill in some of the um, holes. And I wanted to um, kind of make almost like pilot holes with this. So I dr used a drill bit that was actually smaller than the screws. And then I just held up one side and just screwed in those brackets right into the holes that I've got that are already in the bottom of that trunk. And then I just went ahead and did it and spread it out to the other side where the other holes were as well. Lined that up also and um, just kind of screwed the legs on to the bottom of it, honestly. Um, the one thing I will say is that I did end up removing the screws and uh, spreading them out a little bit more because when I did this, I neglected to measure how high I needed this side table to be. And it ended up being just a little bit too high for me. But when it's all done, this is what it looks like. I still have this side table in my living room. I absolutely love it. So many friends compliment me on it. And it is definitely one of my favorite pieces that I was able to create with a $5 thrift find. And for project number 17, I'm going to be creating a very contemporary clock. I have this metallic circle that I picked up from, I believe this was actually a gift that uh, one of my subscribers sent. I have some Jenga wood blocks and I also have that wooden frame from Dollar Tree left over from Valentine's Day. So the first thing I'm going to do is cover up the love makes a house a home and uh, we are going to paint it white with my chalk paint um, actually i think this is an acrylic paint that i'm using here and i did end up doing 
two coats of my acrylic paint on this one to completely cover it. Typically, I would have taken this outside and just spray painted it, but because I'm wanting to use that wood um, kind of trim of that frame, I'm going to uh, just go ahead and hand paint it. I know you guys are shocked that I'm not using spray paint. Now, for the wood, I'm using my black um, antiquing wax here, or the black Waverly ink, actually, is what I'm using. And then for the metal tray, because that has a little bit of a lip on it and I need to kind of lift that up, I have these square dowel rods that I cut down and I am going to be gluing those right on the edge of my tray because that actually lines up perfectly with the frame of the um, kind of the black and white base that I just created because we're actually creating a very contemporary looking clock here. Now I'm taking my Jenga wood pieces. I've got four of these and I am using the Waverly Antiquing Wax on these because I wanted that almost industrial look where you've got that black and the white and the metal and then this brown wood. And I love the way that these take on that antiquing wax. You never really know exactly what they're going to turn out like because of the different wood grains that these are made out of, but that's okay. I loved it. So I went ahead and I also placed my wood pieces at the 12 o'clock, the three o'clock, the six o'clock, and the nine o'clock location of the clock face itself. Then I added a very similar clock face that I used from a previous DIY, and boom, you've got a very contemporary, modern-looking clock that is in my craft room still. All right, everyone, and for project number 18, I'm going to take one of these plant hangers, this welcome sign from Dollar Tree, and also this plastic ice bucket that I picked up from Dollar Tree, kind of in the entertainment area, if you will. The first thing I'm going to do is take that bucket and my wood burning tool and I'm just going to burn um, two holes on either side or one hole, I guess, on each side, a total of two holes into the handle of my ice bucket there. Now, you want to do this in a well ventilated area. You don't want to breathe in these fumes. Definitely use a mask or something if you have that on hand and you're just going to make sure that those holes are big enough to hold your chain. I took my bucket outside and I spray painted it with my terracotta spray paint from Rust-Oleum. I did the outside as well as the inside of this bucket and then also did that top edge of the bucket as well, just making sure that that was good and sturdy. While that was drying, I went inside and I unassembled my sign. I'm going to separate my flower from the welcome sign, but I'm going to be keeping all of those parts. For the flower itself, I'm going to clip off these uh, areas here where the hanger was and uh, remove that tag. <laughs> and then for the hanging plant piece, I'm going to make sure that this planter is... Um, kind of functional in a couple different ways. I'm going to get rid of the hook that's on the end of those chains just by kind of grabbing two pairs of pliers and just uh, spreading out that uh, kind of opening there. So I had three individual chains. I'm not going to be using all three of them though. I'm just going to be using two of the chains and then I'm going to take them and I'm going to hook them onto the welcome sign where the two holes were because that is how our planter is going to be hanging. So once I've got that chain hooked back into there, I'm then going to start working on this flower. Now those two areas where the holes were for the previous chain, I'm just going to trim those down a little bit. I'm going to trim those down and just kind of shape those leaves a little bit. That way you don't even see the holes. Now, the flower is not a perfect flat surface here. So I have this mini miter saw and I'm going to go ahead and just fit this little block inside of the clamp here, making sure, of course, safety first. And then I'm going to cut down this wood block into a smaller block. If you have those smaller wood blocks from Dollar Tree, you could certainly use that as well. I did not have that, but I did have my mini miter saw, which is linked in my Amazon store if you're interested in getting one of those for your craft room. It's definitely very handy to have 
on hand. I then glued my blocks down to the back of the flower. That way I could put my flower up against the flower pot. I also kind of played around with the petals a little bit and just made this a little filler, fuller looking. I also wanted to add some color, so I'm taking some green paint and I'm just gonna be painting on the inside of my petals. Then once the bucket was dry, I'm then gonna go ahead and connect the chain to the front of the bucket or to those holes that I put in the bucket itself. Then I'm gonna take my flower and I'm going to glue that to the front of my bucket. I love the pops of the green and how this really made this nice and vibrant. I did just kind of hold this into place for a few minutes until everything settled up. And then I hung it in my bathroom with my favorite plant and I love the way that this turned out. It's such a fun thing and my plant loves it. So it worked out really good for both of us. <laughs> and for project number 19, I'm going to be creating a very large tray that I'm going to use on my coffee table. This tray is something that I still use to this day. I found this rope, this huge bundle of rope at a store called All About Fabric that is near Lake Hartwell. And I was obsessed and I was really obsessed because it was only $3. I think it was $2.89. I also took a very large piece of cardboard and I just started kind of twisting my rope just to get an idea of really if my cardboard was going to be big enough or not. And um, also, of course, I wanted to make sure that this would fit on my coffee table. So now that I've got a good idea of about how big my tray is going to be, I am now going to start with my hot glue and we are going to start gluing this down. Now, that larger circle, um, I did kind of trace that out so I would have an idea of how big my tray needed to be and now I'm going to glue it down. So rather than gluing it on top of the tray, I am gluing the rope together and making sure that all of the rope pieces are going to stay together very, very tightly. Then, after I've created my circle, I then glue this down on top of the cardboard. It sounds a little backwards, but I thought that doing it this way would make the tray stronger somehow because the rope would be glued together and then it would have the tray or the cardboard part of it also glued together. I guess it worked because I still have the tray to this day. Um, I probably would have just started gluing this onto the cardboard itself, honestly, if I were to redo this one. But um, again, very, very happy with the way that this turned out. Now, my scissors are very dull and this rope is actually very, very strong. So it was hard to cut through those. But once I did, I just simply created two handles on either side of my tray and boom, I've got the most beautiful tray. So many people comment on this tray when they come into my house and I can very proudly say that I made it. And moving on to project number 20, we are going to take these oversized balls that I picked up from Amazon. These are wooden balls and they are, I want to say, 25 centimeter. I actually do have these linked in my Amazon store below. I'm going to start gluing these together and we're going to make a stack of these. So I'm going to start with five and then we're going to add three and then we're going to add one at the top and then we are going to repeat this process until we have two stacks of these wooden balls. Now I would say that probably the only thing that I would have changed in this is I might have had a uh, maybe a flat piece of wood or something. And instead of stacking them like um, a stack of almost like cannonballs, I would have maybe had them stacked flat up against the board. You'll see kind of why, because they're, they end up being bookends 
But um, I'm taking them outside. I'm using this metallic spray paint and I start spray painting these. I did do two coats uh, after everything dried. I flipped it over and I spray painted them all again. And um, at first I wasn't super happy with them because of the way that the glue globs and everything had started uh, showing up. But after I saw them on my bookshelf, I actually fell in love with them because it looked like like cannonballs or like metal balls that were creating these beautiful bookends that I still have on my bookshelf to this day. I actually love these and I think they make a huge, huge statement. And DIY number 21 is going to be some oversized lanterns that I was inspired to create from Kirkland's. I have these real deal Jenga blocks and these are from a neighbor as well. I picked these up at a yard sale. I think I paid $3 for the box. And uh, then I also have two of these kind of springtime yard ornaments that they sell at Dollar Tree and uh, I'm just going to be putting those aside for right now. So first thing I'm going to do is start gluing together my jingle blocks. Now if you have a straight edge or a ruler I definitely recommend that you use that. Um, these are still mass produced much like the Dollar Tree jingle blocks but um, they, they're probably a little better, a little more even than some of the Dollar Tree Jingle Blocks. So I'm kind of creating a base, if you will, that's going to kind of look like a X. And um, then it's going to have these sections that continue to go up. And we are going to build all of these until we create some beautiful lanterns. So for that kind of crisscross piece first. Now you can kind of see I've created those H kind of looking or those U-shaped pieces and then a couple of the longer pieces to kind of glue everything together to create this base. And then I'm going to start working my way up and building each one of my towers. Now I'm also going to take that center piece that um, that uh what what did they call it they called it like a lawn ornament i think is what they called it or a garden ornament and uh, i am just going to glue that down to the crisscross kind of part of my candle base there because um I'm making lanterns, some oversized lanterns for the outside. Now, I am just using hot glue for this. Um, these were outside for a short period of time, and then I ended up moving these inside. If you are going to make this for outside, I highly, highly recommend that you use E6000 or super glue for sure. Now, I ended up um, building one really tall lantern, and then I built a second one that was about the same height, and I literally just replicated that process. Now, once everything was done, I took these outside and I spray painted them black using my matte black spray paint from Rust-Oleum. Again, love the way this looks and uh, love the way that this all comes together. I had these Dollar Tree glass faces that were left over from a previous project. I just simply added some rocks and some water and some floating candles and boom, you've got these amazing looking lanterns. I made sure that I had one glass uh, vase that was a little bit shorter than the other one, adding it to the larger one. I then removed those so I could take them outside and put them on my front porch and I love the way these turned out. And for project number 22, I'm going to be using two of these Dollar Tree vases and my terracotta spray paint that I love so much. This stuff is my main staple, I think, in the summertime. Now, I did try and spray paint the vases uh, and it didn't go well. So I luckily had another pair and I painted them with Mod Podge. Then... I took them outside and spray painted them with the terracotta spray paint and it worked like a charm, thankfully, because I only bought four of these. I intended to use all four on my dining room table, but this is the way these vases turned out and I think that they are so, so cute. 
And for project number 23, this is an easy, easy project. I took four of these or three of these succulent plants and some Dollar Tree twine and created some really cool, very simple looking planters. Now I took my planters, I literally put some hot glue on it. I wrapped each one of these planters in my twine and created a very cool looking set of succulent planters that were very different looking than the traditional just kind of one dollar succulent planters which are cute but I think that this really ups the style a little bit more and they look adorable on a tiered tray and uh, I am so happy with the way that these turned out that uh, I think I'm going to make even more of these when the new season comes. Now I have to say that DIY number 24 is probably one of my favorites. Now I picked up this welcome sign from the 99 cent store that was in Los Angeles. It was actually a dollar 99 because not everything in that store is 99 cents. And um, I also used some of this eucalyptus garland that I picked up from Five Below. I loved this garland and thought that it was going to be perfect to wrap around this gorgeous grapevine wreath that I picked up from a local yard sale. I paid $3 for this wreath for him and am in love with it. I took my sign outside and I'm going to go ahead and just spray paint it white. I did actually detach it from the, um, from the uh, cardboard there, but then I just used the cardboard to spray it on top. And uh, I just made sure that I had two very nice coats of my white matte spray paint from Rust-Oleum. I then, while that was drying, took my eucalyptus garland and I am just going to wrap this around. Now, you can do this one of two ways. I am not wrapping it all the way around. I am actually tucking it into the wreath form and then I'm kind of going partial um, the partially around or partially the way around. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm wrapping the garland around, but I'm making it a little more <laughs> controlled because I did cut the garland and I wanted to be able to kind of loosely wrap this around and kind of give this a more organic look or feel as if this was growing versus just kind of wrapping it around. And also doing it this way, you create a little less bulk on the backside of the wreath that way it does hang good and flat up against my front door. I have a storm door that is a glass storm door. And if I put a wreath on there that is too thick or too bulky, I won't actually be able to close the storm door. So that's part of the reasoning why I'm doing this. And then for my welcome sign, I just hot glued this right to the rattan or to that uh, wicker, whatever this thing is made out of. And uh, it has held so good. I'm using Shore Bonders all-purpose glue for this one. And I love this, especially on my bright yellow front door. This is a staple. This is the wreath I use anytime I don't have a wreath on my door for any seasonal holidays. And for project number 25, I am going to be taking a wooden rolling pin from Ikea and I'm just cutting it in half. I had a friend of mine cut this in half who had a miter saw. I also got this board from Michaels. It was $4.99. What I liked about it was it was almost the identical color as my rolling pins. For the handles of my rolling pins, I am going to glue those back into place. The rolling pins typically had a an, like a metal rod down the middle of them, but I just got rid of that. I added a generous amount of Shore Bonder wood glue to this and then just took that handle and glued it right into place. Any of the glue that's going to ooze out along the bottom, I am just going to go ahead and wipe that away with my finger. It's already cooled down enough to where it doesn't burn my hand or anything like that, so it's totally, totally cool to do this. I did repeat this with the second one as well, and then just made sure that everything was good and solid before moving on to my next step. For the next part, I am going to go ahead and just kind of eyeball where I want to place my 
rolling pins. Now for this, if you wanted to pull out a ruler, you could definitely do that. I wasn't that concerned about this being perfectly symmetrical. Um, I kind of like the, the rustic appeal. That's what we'll call it anyway, of uh, not pulling out the, the ruler and, and really measuring this. Again, just kind of eyeballing it, figuring out where I want to screw these in, and then I'm just going to mark it with a pencil. I am going to go ahead and flip that board over, and as you can see, I've got those marks there. I just took my drill out, and I drilled two pilot holes where the marks were. Again, just kind of eyeballing it and estimating it because I am going to be adding my wood screws in just a second. So I took some wood screws and I'm literally just kind of going right through that pilot hole that I drilled and just going kind of right into the center of my rolling pin. You just want to make sure that your screws are not going to be too long to where they come out through the rolling pin itself. Um, as you can see, these are kind of off-centered and you will need to do two screws to hold those rolling pins upright. Otherwise they will kind of wiggle around a little bit. After I did that with both of my rolling pins, I was ready to go ahead and start staining. Sometimes wood stain can be a little messy, but I do like this Minwax stain. What I like about it is that it's water-based, so it actually cleans up off of your hands really, really easily. I'm just going to take a cloth, and I'm literally just going to wipe this stain on, just like you see here. I'm kind of doing this on purpose, making it a little heavier in some places and a little lighter in other places. The key really is just to make sure that every part of the surface is covered. You want to be able to get into all of those little nooks and crannies and cracks and crevices and all those fun parts that are hard to get to. Um, what I did was take my uh, Dollar Tree bag there and I just literally squirted some stain on top of it and then I'm using my cloth here and then I'm just going to take that bag and throw it all away. It's going to be very, very, very easy to clean up all of this. And then uh, I will take a detail brush or a small brush and just kind of work its work some of that stain into some of those areas that I just couldn't get to with that cloth itself. And then once I've done that, I will go ahead and just take a dry cloth and just start wiping away any of that excess stain. Again, just giving this a very cool, just kind of a rustic look. Now, as you can see on the back side of mine, I did not stain this. Feel free to stain it if you feel like it needs to be stained. I did add two sets of picture hooks and then just hung this on the wall in my kitchen. I absolutely love the way this looks. I actually saw one of these at a flea market and they wanted almost $95 for it. I was literally able to do this for $10. It's a great place for coats. It's a great place for aprons, and I love the way it looks. All right, you guys, kitchen. that is it. That is all 25 DIYs. I am a little hoarse from voiceovering that entire video for you today, but uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below which ones were your favorite. I think you probably know which ones were my favorite because most of these were my favorite. All right, guys, until next time, thank you so much.